The relationship between a patient and therapist depends on trust, but an alarming headline suggests some therapists are taking advantage of that trust. In fact, a recent survey found 12% of mental health professionals admitting to having sexual contact with a patient. Licensed marriage and family therapist Keandra Jackson joins us now to weigh in. Before we even delve into it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That number surprised me. Did it surprise you? That number did not surprise me. So first of all, we want to say for every viewer out there, it is not okay ever to have a sexual relationship with a client in any case. However, that doesn't surprise me because when you are in a relationship with a client, it doesn't always have to be a position where there's so much kind of like, I guess you can say there's sexual tension, right? So you're in a relationship with a client and there's trust, right? There's vulnerability. There's things that you express in your therapy sessions that make you kind of like put in a position where you can kind of like share those things, but, right? But, but to me, if you're a therapist, and you could be a relationship therapist, you yeah. could be a psychiatrist, a psychologist, any litany of degrees you might hold. Isn't it sacred that when you go into that field that you take a vow to yourself to not have a sexual relationship with your client? Absolutely, you should. So how 12%, this is self-reporting. Self-reporting we know is notoriously low. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're not, that's why I'm surprised mm -hmm. by it because if you're gonna go into the, the field of helping people, taking advantage of your client is the last thing you should do. And I don't care Absolutely. what anyone says, there's always gonna be a hierarchy there. If you're, if you're in there and you're the patient, you are not going to be in a position of power. So it, you're not surprised. Is it because you think that some therapists maybe go into the field with ill intentions or is it because you think they lose their way? I think it's because they lose their way. I think most clinicians go into the field with the passion and desire to really help people, but sometimes they get sidetracked and sidebarred and they always don't always come through with the position to kind of like see the client's needs for in the uh, forefront. They're human. They make mistakes. That's very true. Very they, true. They, they fall yeah. prey to temptation. Yeah. And the patient is opened up with them. There yes. is that trust, that bond. I think that also ever... gets misconstrued, though, as sexual energy a lot of times. Right. Because right? you put all your trust in them, and here's this, like, you can't count on anybody else, and that's why you end up here, and here's this person. Yes. And they listen to you, and they understand you, yes. and they get you, and then you form this relationship with mm -hmm. them. And then it's broken because of that. I know that as a psychiatrist, there's a rule. There, you cannot have sex mm -hmm. with a patient, a former patient. Ever. Psychologists are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. What is the rule? Is it? I believe the rule is two to three years after you ended that therapeutic relationship with your client. So there is an ethical gap there. So is there ever a time where, in your opinion, it would be okay? You're a relationship yes. expert and therapist. Yes. Is there a time where, look, two people could fall in love in that scenario. I get it. Because also we're talking about different things here. You might be going into a therapist for talking about a very minor issue. It could literally be, you could be forced to go into a, a therapy session because your dog is driving you crazy. And I feel like there's a deeper issue there, but I get it. I, I'm, what I'm asking, what I'm asking <laughs> yeah, is, is there ever a place where at some point down the line it would be appropriate. I wouldn't advise that at I all. Because that boundary, you talked about that power play, you're always going to be in a position of power even when that relationship yeah. ended, right? I mean, and you're going to know so much about them and you don't want that in your potential relationship moving forward. I mean, as a therapist, your license is in yes, jeopardy. Yes, your livelihood. It's hard to realize it when you're in it, but just realize as a patient, like she said, no touching. Your therapist should not touch you. And also, your therapist should not be talking about themselves. They shouldn't be telling right. you about their problem and saying, girl, I can relate because let me tell you back in 1992 what happened to me. So that's very inappropriate, true. right? Yeah, very, very much so inappropriate. Can we, can we get back to one thing before we go to break? Sure. We were talking earlier in the show about millennials and how millennials have to juggle so many different things. So what's, what's really interesting about today's day and age is you could go see your therapist. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 years ago, it was easy to leave and not see them unless you were going into therapy. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, via social media, yes. everything else, everyone is two degrees of separation away from one another on social media, so it seems much more conducive now to, oh yeah, hey, I have a great Facebook page, and it could even be a Facebook page for your practice, and then the next thing you know, you friended each other on social media. Those boundaries have blurred. Yes. 
Yes, they and, have. And, and, and is that appropriate? Is it not appropriate? There are a lot of physicians out there who are very active Hello, on social them. media and have, mm -hmm. they have relationships yeah. outside of the clinic with patients on social media. Mm -hmm. That changes boundaries. Th yeah. This is never before seen, so these are never before seen circumstances mm -hmm. and no one knows how to navigate it. Yes, so we need to rewrite the script a little we bit. Do. <laughs> we do, 12% is really too beautiful. high. Uh, what I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, Keandra, but huh? if you are going to see a therapist and whether it is a, a marriage therapist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a counselor, and you feel uncomfortable you feel like there may be some element of them taking advantage of you, quit. Yes. Quit that relationship yes. immediately. If it's inappropriate, you report them to their board. Yes. Because they're probably doing it to other people as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You should never be all, hey, baby, how's things going? <laughs> that should never happen in your therapy session. There may be some times where you have a little light touch. Yes. If someone's breaking down, mm -hmm. they need a little bit of a containment. But it should never be physical proximity where it's inappropriate. But wow. we do want to acknowledge that there are some fantastic psychiatrists and psychologists out there. So we're not saying that yes. that's of not the majority. But yes. The, yes. the great majority. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can confide in them, put your trust in them. But if, yes. if that little bit of you, is a little concerned and it's not a good fit. Yes. There are plenty of other Absolutely. Yes. therapists out there. And report that person too. Report that yes. person. Report that we'll person. have, mm -hmm. we'll actually have links on our website if you do worry that maybe you're in a, I'll call it an abusive relationship with yeah. your therapist mm -hmm. where you can report them and, and seek help. Let's take a break.